Hey, welcome back to the garage. It's that time of the year when we start planning for our winter storage. Doesn't matter if you've got a tour bike, big cruiser, sport bike, they all need kind of the same maintenance before you put them into storage. So I'm gonna share with you today five things I definitely do before I put my bike down. We're gonna talk about battery care. How do you keep your battery fresh over winter? Tires and how you keep them round over winter. Gasoline, how do we keep it fresh over the winter? Oil, how do we keep our oil from corroding our engine over winter? And then lastly, we're gonna talk about physical protection for the bike. We're not really planning for winter, we're planning for spring. What we don't want is we get up in spring and our bike won't start. Or we have to take it to the shop for expensive repairs. We want to be able to hop on our bikes and go for a ride. So come along with me and I'll walk you through my process. So the first thing we want to talk about is our batteries. Batteries are kind of overlooked because they just sit there and they, they're, they run every time until they don't, and then it's pretty catastrophic. Batteries hate the cold. They don't like to be stored where they're gonna freeze and thaw. If you don't have a heated garage, like my car, then you wanna be sure that your batteries are stored somewhere off the bike where they're in a climate controlled area. Bring them in your house, don't leave them in your shed, don't leave them in your bike, don't leave them in your garage. It's really hard on batteries to freeze and thaw. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure of is you've got a maintainer. Not a charger, a maintainer. A maintainer trickle charges at a very slow rate and it comes on and off and tests your battery. So every time it turns on, it checks the battery to make sure that it's working correctly. Also note, this guy, this big touring bike has a large gel battery. Uh, these do better in cool weather. They don't freeze, but they do well in cool weather. This one has a little tiny lithium ion battery, so it, does, it doesn't have much juice in it, but it's very tiny and lightweight. So you gotta make sure with your lithium batteries that you've got a lithium charger. This is an Optimate, it's green. This is the other Optimate, it's red, and it's the gel version. It actually works on lead acid too. If I plug this into my lithium battery, it won't charge it at all. So make sure you get the right charger for your battery type. Motorcycle tires are made of a soft rubber compound. They're also shaped very differently from a car tire. They have a narrow center. And that center part sits on the ground and over a long winter, that center part can get flat on you. So you don't wanna just leave your bike sitting. What you're gonna wanna do is get yourself a little portable compressor like this. I got this off of Amazon, they're very cheap. I actually have a big compressor and I hardly ever use it since I bought this. It works in my car, it works on this, it's great. So you're just gonna make sure your bike is at the right tire pressure and all you gotta do is move it during the winter. So you can push it back and forth every couple of weeks. You know, every, I like to do it every week or so. I come out and I'll move my bikes around uh, to make sure that they don't get a flat spot on them. It's pretty cheap insurance. Um, if you have a bike where both tires are in the air, I still like to spin them. I don't have a front stand for this bike yet. I might pick one up. But that's all you gotta do. It's a bit more of a pain in the ass if you park outside because uh, you're gonna have a cover on your bike because you wanna protect your bike. And all you gotta do is still push it with the cover on. It's a little bit more of a pain because you have your kickstand down. It's gonna be tied up with the, with the cover and everything, but it's still necessary. You don't wanna have to buy tires come spring. Bear with me for just a minute. I'm gonna get just a little bit nerdy. This is gasoline. It is hydrogen and carbon. It stores energy really well and it burns really well. What it does not do is age very well. As it ages, things evaporate and it turns into this yellow ook. It is sticky, it moves, it's thicker, and it moves weird, so it's kind of gross. As it sits in your bike, it'll run through your fuel system and stick to the walls of your fuel lines. It'll stick to your carburetor, it'll stick to your fuel injectors, it'll stick to everything in your fuels, including your fuel tank. It'll stick to everything. It's very sticky stuff. It's like cholesterol in your bike. And that means that it's gonna clog it up and eventually you're gonna have to do some major repairs because of this. It is really easy to protect against. You just need to get some stabilizer, Put it in your gas in the right ratio and run it. 
I also keep a can of gas over winter that's got stabilizer in it so I can keep, top, keep it topped off. Here in Colorado, and a lot of places, they add ethanol to our fuel. When that ethanol is in your fuel, it has an extra molecule in it, so it's hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. That makes it hydrophilic, it attracts a lot of water to it. Once the water gets in your fuel, when the temperature changes, it can precipitate back out. So you wanna make sure that doesn't happen. You wanna keep your gas stabilized, you wanna keep your tank topped off all winter long. So anytime you run your bike, I like to run mine every week or every couple of weeks, I'll, I'll ride or something, and then I'll top it back off with stabilized gasoline. So that's all you have to do to protect your gasoline. Stabilizer, top off your tank, keep it looking like this so it doesn't look like this. A little less nerdy now, we're gonna talk about oil. It's a magical substance. We pull it out of the ground, we refine it, and we do a lot of things with it. For us, it's the lifeblood of our engine. It lubricates our clutch, our pistons, our cams, our bearings, everything. The whole inside of the engine is coated with oil when it's running, it's just spraying everywhere. So it's important that that oil is clean in our engine. Oil ages terribly. It's in an environment with a lot of heat, a lot of friction, a lot of metal. So there's metal shavings in here, there is the smell of exhaust. When you smell it and it comes out, it'll smell faintly of exhaust. Uh, and that's, that's normal. It also has an acid in it. That acid will eat away at your engine. That's why it's important to change your oil at the end of the season. We don't want to leave that acid sitting in there burning away at our, our metal parts. Now a lot of people are going to tell you, Honda says every 4,000 miles. And that's just fine. Like they know what they're talking about. It's their motor, they're the engineers. Here's what I can tell you. Changing oil is cheap, it's easy, and nobody has ever hurt their engine putting clean oil in it. The last thing we're gonna talk about here is protecting the physical bike itself, not the engine or any of that other stuff, but the actual physical bike. Our seats are expensive to replace, our plastics bleach out in the sun, so we've gotta go ahead and protect it. So while you're storing it over winter, you wanna make sure you get it under a tarp but don't go to Home Depot or one of the big box stores and buy some big plastic blue tarp that you can tie to it. You want a tarp that's gonna breathe. What you don't want is moisture to get trapped underneath the tarp and just sit there and turn into mold over winter. So you want something very breathable. You also want a couple of features on, on your tarp, especially if you're bigger touring bikes, like the Goldwing or one of the, you know, Road Glide or Chieftain. You want to make sure that it covers all of the bike. It can get around here. It covers the full engine. You'll see this one tucks in on the wheels. It covers the saddlebags. And the last thing is it's, uh, it's got these guys right here. Bungee cords effectively. And they, they allow you to pull this bungee cord under the bike and strap it down so that as the wind hits, this tarp won't lift off. I've had this thing out in the, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in 60 mile an hour winds, and this tarp is held up just fine. So that's it. That's the last thing is covering the bike. All right, so that's it. That's how you uh, store your bike for winter. You can check your battery, protect it. Your tires need protection. Your gas, your oil, your bike gets covered. So before you, uh, Tuck your bike in like one of your precious children. You've taken care of it and it'll take care of you come spring. That's it, have a great time, keep your wheels down.